Okay. It says we're live, which I always like to do that double check. Hey, look at that, we're live. Ah, you're fast enough. It's gone to that that uh, that stream that was on there. <laughs> Did you do it again? <laughs> I told you. Yes. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Good welcome. Evening. Good evening. Uh, thank you for joining us. It's a Friday night live stream. It's weird, wacky, and wonderful. Uh, it's uh, I'm your host tonight, Matt Bailey and Andrew Derbidge from the Society, talking all sorts of uh, nonsense about these whiskies and having a bit of fun with them. And uh, I want to thank everyone who's tuning in and some of the comments that are coming up, of course. I uh, always like to see what's what's coming up here. Scott Fitzsimon says, boys, boys, boys. Yes, that's right. We're here. Good to see you, Scott. And um, hey, guys, from David and or Caroline Taylor. Andrew, welcome. <laughs> Good to be here. Yeah, good to be here. Yeah. Good to see everyone. Good to see everyone. Yeah, exactly. It's, good it's to see you all. It's a Friday night. Weird, wacky, and wonderful is the name of our tasting. And uh, as a little bit of a hint and precursor, it may well also be a good descriptor for the mood that uh, we're in right now. Certainly me. Yeah, so, uh, I'm in a good mood. Friday, Friday, Friday nights are interesting. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, it's, it's been a long week. It's been a long week. And uh, we're, we're awake yes. and we're here and we're, uh, we're, we're going to look forward to this. Um, uh, oh, G'day, Drew McKinney. Good to see you. Oh, Drew. Uh, Drewby's here. Good to see you, Drew. Hope you're well, mate. Um, now, the first question off the rank is Colby Whale, who's asked, when do bottles for sale, please? That's a, the interesting grammar, but I'm going to answer your question by saying 7.15. So I've allowed enough time for us to actually start the stream before the extra bottles go on sale. When I say extras, there's a couple of bottles, a handful of some of these going to be available on the website in about uh, 12 minutes or something. So, um, yeah, hope you're all well. Um, okay. That, that's a you, you changed camera for this tonight. That's fascinating because we you wouldn't know this, folks, but we are more than two meters apart, and your your camera has got the special lens that makes us look like we're much closer than. Yeah, we are. it's true. We are maintaining we're, we're, social distancing. Yeah, that's a very clever lens you've got there. We're actually about twelve meters apart at the moment. You can't even tell. It's extraordinary. <laughs> Fish eye. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm just going to check. Uh, just make sure uh, everyone's just in case anyone's watching on YouTube. There are some members who don't use Facebook, and that's fine. So we do actually broadcast these to YouTube as well. Uh, there's about 10 people watching on YouTube as well, which is great. Um, so, Hey, uh, Craig, Craig, Craig Morton's uh, got the drill here. Just finishing my welcome dram. Excellent. That's, that's how we do our tastings. You start with the welcome dram, then we get stuck into the real thing. So uh, good on you, Craig. You, you follow the script there. Mm. Uh, interesting dram. Mm. Yeah. It's interesting one the, dram. One yeah. of those brown bottles that uh, covers the colour, so you can't see. I call it undistilled whiskey. Yes, right. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Mm. Cool. Well, shall we? Shall we? <laughs> We're here we to drink whiskey. If you've got your pack at home, you can open it up. You've got five samples and a lot of um, wood wool, as it's called in there. Yes. I hope that doesn't get all over your carpet because I've got all over mine. Um, and you've got five 30 mil samples. You don't have to drink them all right now. Uh, of course, you can open them as uh, now. Of course, we'd like you to open them now because that's what they we're here for. But um, you can also share them with someone tonight. It's a, it's a big dram each one, so you get to share them around. And um, we're going to go through and have a chat about each whiskey. And we're going to do that thing, and I haven't told Andrew this yet. Uh, we're going to do that thing like the last taste in the last virtual, where we're going to try our absolute hardest to not mention the distillery oh, names. yes, yes, yes. No, I'm a big believer in that. We are a big believer in that. We, we yeah, shouldn't right. even have to try. No, we shouldn't have to try. We're talking <laughs> about flavor tonight. We're talking about flavor. We're talking about the samples. We're talking about all these five flavor profiles in front of us. Well, two are the same, but you'll see why in a moment. So we had a discussion about where to start. We did. Uh, and I thought the beginning. Yeah, let's start at the beginning. Um, we're going to start with Society Cask Number One One Two Dot Five One in your pack. Um, do the viewers at home have the tasting? Yeah, yeah everyone got, yeah, got one. Yep. Fantastic. Do you, do you look at that and just think of the Olympic rings? I mean, not not until you just De said that. De deconstructed. It's the yeah. deconstructed Olympic <laughs> rings. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a strange year for Olympics, so yeah, 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 we, yeah. we need to de deconstruct the, the rings as well. Yep. Um, so yes, uh, we're going to start with uh, um, 112.51, uh, funky, how do you pronounce that second word there, man? I would have said iry. I, that's what I would have said. Yeah, iry. Uh, yeah. Funky iry feeling. Funky iry feeling. In our sweet, fruity and mellow um, flavour profile, 
and we're kicking off with a 15 year old whiskey straight away. Yeah, that's, that's a bit that's unusual, exciting. isn't it? You wouldn't normally start a tasting with it with a 15 year old. It depends where you're going to from there, I guess. But uh... yeah, no, I you you can start anywhere you like, of course. But we recommend starting with the 112, and it's a 15 year old whiskey. Now, the whole theme about tonight was weird, wacky, and wonderful. The idea behind the five that we've picked out for tonight's tasting is that they're weird casts, wacky distilleries, wonderful whiskey, and or in this case, there's even a rum in the lineup. But the idea is that it's weird, wacky, and wonderful. They're sort of different from what you might expect, and I, I find that exciting. I, li I love trying codes and flavors that take me out of my not just comfort zone, but uh, sort of surprise and delight my delight me a bit. Sort of, it, it's unexpected. It's an unexpected journey each time. And, and I'd argue that that's exactly what the society is about. I mean, it was founded on those principles, wasn't it? It you was, know, yeah. It, it, when, when our founders discovered that drinking something at cast strength out of a cast was completely different to the commercial uh, version that they were used to. Um, so we're probably um, very much demonstrating that tonight. Yeah, absolutely. To, to what we're coming from. Yeah. Now, this is Distillery 112, this first one. I've, I've poured about half my sample into the glass there. Colour, isn't it? Good colour. Now, the reason why this is weird, wacky, and wonderful all at once, this one in particular, A, it's a 15-year-old whiskey. It's a 15-year-old whiskey. So that's exciting to begin with, as Andrew said. Second of all, it's a weird distillery. It's a it's a incredibly weird distillery. Incredibly weird distillery. This is like the, the, the head blender there, Michael Henry, lovely bloke, had the opportunity to have a look around this distillery just last year. And he's a, it's like he's like a, a kid in a, a sandpit. He can do whatever he likes in there. It, it's this... 13 different uh, whiskies they can make on site. Now, that's interesting, isn't it? Because the number that used to get splashed around for ages was eight. Yeah. Eight, eight different makes that they, they had. Now, of course, it was, this was under previous ownership, so new owners now, they've obviously decided they, they want to do Expand more. Expand it even more. But the way that they're set up, they've got the scope to do that. So they've got column stills. They've got straight neck pot stills. They've got swan neck pot stills. Stills with rectifying heads. Stills with rectifying heads. So they can create, and that's why at the Society we've got 112, 122, 135, G9, and G15. All the, We've got five different codes for one distillery and for good reason. They're all very different. I know we have some society members, especially tuning in tonight, who love, 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 love their 112s and 135s. So this is hopefully one that you can um, you can enjoy. Jim Finnegan, good to see you, mate. Drew McKinney. Okay, uh, 112.51, better than expected. Sweet and much longer finish. Good to hear, Drew. You know what's funny? We could actually mention the name of this and we wouldn't be mentioning the name of the distillery. Yeah, yeah, you're after yeah. you. No, no, no. I, 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 I'm I not going to break any rules here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, self-imposed rules, but, you know. No, it's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. So this, uh, the, the um, well, let's, let's look to an equivalent. So let's think of the Springbank Distillery. The Springbank Distillery makes a whiskey called Springbank, but they make uh, other variants as well, uh, bottled under different names, such as uh, Long Row and Hazel Bank, Hazelwood, Hazel... Burn. Burn. I got close, wasn't I? Very close. Um, so this uh, distillery, which is located um, unusually close to Loch Lomond, as it happens, um, names some of its variants after some of the islands in on the loch. Right. Uh, which is where this one gets its name from. Oh, there you go. Hmm. Hmm. Named after a, a little island on Loch Lomond. Now, the, the wacky part of this, so I said this is a weird distillery. It is a weird distillery. The fact that they can produce 13 different makes, 13 different types of new make off, off one distillery when many distilleries might do one or two. Well, do one. <laughs> might do two or three. Or, or uh, do one well. Do one well. Yes, do one well. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I almost feel like I know what you're talking about there. But um, <laughs> almost. But there's in this case, the, the wacky part of it for me as well is the fact that this is this, this is an exciting one. I had to dig in a bit of detail for this particular cask. This is extra matured. Is that word extra? Extra. Very extra. Yes. Uh, in a refill X rum barrel. So it spent, I think it was 13 years in an ex-bourbon barrel, then two years in a refill ex-rum barrel. The cool thing is the ex-rum barrel that this was used to mature in is a Society rum. It was an R11. Now, I, don't, I couldn't get any detail on which R11 it was. may have been R11.1.2.3, whatever. But it was, an, it was an R11 that was released more than two years ago, which was then used. So it's gone from a Society cask to a Society cask to bottling, which I think is really cool. We, don't, like, we haven't even seen that kind of thing happen before. No. That's, and always innovating, always trying to keep something interesting there. And I love that comment that I put up on the screen. Emma Cookson says, ooh, pineapple hard can candy lollies. 
Good call. Yeah, good call. Uh, uh, we'll let you in on a little secret t- tonight, folks. I've done no preparation for this whatsoever. And, <laughs> and, and I got in the door very late, got to the studio. There was a huge traffic outside. There was protests outside. They're trying to topple down the statue of Jim Beam that Matt has out the front. <laughs> Uh, just it took so long to get into the building as a result. Uh, so I've come in blind pretty much. And interestingly, I noticed and I thought, gee, there's a bit of a rum note there. Yeah. And surprise, surprise. It's it's from an ex rum cast. So there you, you can get that rum influence. So yeah. There's a bit in that, I reckon. They already took my statue of Booker No and Pip Hills out the front. So <laughs> they're going to try and take my Jim Beam statue as well. That's a <laughs> lovely nose. And, and you get the fruit. Now, what's one thing that's interesting about. Uh, this variant, so I'm not talking about the distillery, but this particular make that they make at the distillery, um, is famed for being distilled at a much higher cut point. It typically comes off at about 80%. Now, most distilleries would go to much lower than that in their cut down into, into the high 60s. And the lower down you go, the more robust uh, fusel oils and, and more dense alcohols you get. Because we're taking it at a higher cut at, up at 80%, you get really light, floral, fruity, oily spirit as a result. And so this variant, this particular make uh, that they do at this distillery, is often uh, described, if you had to pigeonhole it, as being light and floral and grassy. Mm. And that is all there on the nose as well, isn't it? With the, with the rum just sort of giving it a bit of a, bit a, of a hug. hug around yeah, the, the yeah. outside. Now that Emma said it, it could be power of suggestion, but I do get those sort of like pineapple chunks. Like oh, definitely. Like, yeah, you know those, no. You remember, you know those... Um, and the SPC cans. Or yeah, yeah. I was yeah. going to say, the, the SPC, like... Oh, you, you were more golden circle there. I was more of a golden circle boy. Uh, okay, yeah. <laughs> uh, there's a question here from Nick Huzek who asks, are Jamaican rum barrels made of American oak? I believe they are. I think uh, in the, predominantly, yes. Well, you'd have, I mean, if you, if you think of historically, why would uh, Jamaica um, or anyone in the Caribbean take the time to fell trees in Europe and bring them across. Yeah, true. Interesting question. An interesting question. Yeah. Uh, it, oh, we're going to we're going to assume so. Yes. You had a sip yet? Yeah, I just had one small okay, one. I'm, yeah. I'm going for a sip now, and then as soon as I've had a sip, I'm going to do something that we need to do. Sure. Well. It's drier than I was expecting, but it's a very pleasant dry, isn't it? It's a very pleasant dryness. Yeah. Mm. So, um, look, we're in a weird, wacky, wonderful mood tonight, and we're going to keep it that way. Um, but I do need to make mention of something. Uh, today was a bit of a solemn day, and uh, worth worth sharing with, with, the, with the whole community here. But uh, we, we lost uh, this week one of our founding, our foundation members. When the Society first launched in 2002, uh, a whole stack of people came to those launch events, and uh, on the 30th of November 2002, we started our membership list. And there were a bunch of people who signed up uh, that day. Uh, and one of them, um, Harry Anderson, uh, one of our foundation members, who was a tremendous advocate for the society, a tremendous ambassador and stalwart, lovely, wonderful bloke. And uh, he unfortunately went to uh, the big distillery in the sky uh, last week and uh, the memorial of funeral for him uh, was today. So mm. Susie Tors and I both went along and, and paid our respects and it was a wonderful day, a yeah. wonderful service, and what a wonderful man. And he will be sorely missed. He was a top bloke, wonderful Scotsman, loved his whiskey, loved the society. And uh, I just think uh, whilst we've got our first dram here that comes from Scotland, it would mm. be appropriate just to toast Harry and say, mate, thank you for all your involvement with society and uh, and cheers, and, which is a strange word to say, but uh, he had a good life. Yeah, uh, no, he absolutely did. 83 years is a good innings. Uh, but cheers to Harry and his family. Um, thank you for everything. And, mate, um, uh, keep a space for us in the warehouse in the sky. Cheers, Cheers Harry. Harry. Cheers, Cheers. Harry. Mm. I'd be very, very happy with a, with um, a bottle of that. Yes, I'd be happy with too. I'd be happy with too. Mm. But speaking of which, in one minute's time, at exactly 7.15, there's seven bottles of this available on the website. Um, like I said, there's very few of some of these available. Our warehouse is very dry at the moment, but um, we're coming into some um, new stock soon and yes. and we're looking forward to all that. Of course, and July outturn, which we'll talk about a little bit later on. But there's, um, as, of say, as of right now, there's about seven or eight bottles on the website. Julian's just tuned in. Evening, lads. Julian, mate, good to see you. Sancho Julian. 
Drew says, I love the lingering finish. It does linger, doesn't it? It's mm. a great finish. It sticks around that one, doesn't it? Mm. I reckon that's, a, and we don't always say this about the first whiskey in a, in, a, in a tasting, but that's a whiskey you could spend some time with and stay on all night. Yeah. There's a mutual friend of ours that we won't need to name tonight, but he would call this a session dram. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, a sessionable whiskey, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, borrowed from the beer world. Well, yeah, yeah. 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 Interestingly, his uh, duration of a session is a hell of a lot longer than mine, I would just say. <laughs> but, um, anyway. Uh, yeah, fortitude. Alex has tuned in. Morsey, good to see you. I'm late, lads, drinking with jewels. What are we on? We're still on the first one, 112.51. Yeah, we're just enjoying that first whiskey at the moment. We, the order for those playing at home, if you want to line them up in for everything, is uh, 112.51. Uh, funky irie feeling followed by 134.7 which we'll move on to shortly followed by 52.31 which will be in the middle 16.44 nearing the end and then we're going to finish with the r1.5 um i'm late lads we're drinking yeah sorry you just said that there you go hampton jamaica cask no julian actually we we're just talking about that it's actually it's an ex society cask from r11 um i couldn't possibly name that distillery for you uh for actually for the sheer reason i can't remember but it, it's <laughs> r11 and it's it was one one two that went into an R eleven for an extra maturation, and to the um, yeah. Now let's let's inject this into the discussion at this point in time, which we do every time you and I get together. Yeah, yeah. Well, should we've you got... add? Should you add water? Uh, I didn't, and I wouldn't. <laughs> you heard it here. There you go. Well, I just that, I don't think that, that was very QED. That was yeah. just right. No, no, no. Move, I mean, I, <laughs> no, no. I mean that in a way like don't mention the water. Don't mention the water. No, you can have water if you want, but I um I didn't, and I don't think it needed it. You, okay, you know, it's it, if, if anyone at home's got a, a, a an opinion on that, um, share it with us. I, look, I don't feel the need. I haven't reached for it yet. I was just wondering uh, what you thought about it. Yeah, no, fair enough. Um, Andy Milne, thanks for tuning in, mate. You've got a pack sitting in front of you right now. I know, so that's um. And what have you said there? Worthy Park. Yes. Well, I've even put that on the screen. So mm. you could very well be right. You are right. As parks go, it's a worthy one. <laughs> All right. Now where's the chalkboard for that? There we go. <laughs> We're well, keeping tally. Yeah, yeah. Keeping yeah. tally of those ones. <laughs> this one. <laughs> All right. Um, oh. I should have mentioned as well, actually, in your packs are uh, your tasting notes. So you can actually have a look at the full SMWS tasting note as you'd see it in an outturn there as well. Um, unfortunately, most of these have sold out already, but th these first two are available and on the site now. Um, a couple of drops opened it up and took away the heat, says Johnny Edwards. Yeah, but then a conflicting opinion by Mr. Roberts, who said added water, didn't need it, regretted it. There you go. <laughs> but, but we say this all the time. Adding yeah. water, is a, it's a personal thing. It's a Very subjective yeah. thing. Um, everyone's palate is different and what you take and get out of it. And also, <laughs> depends how much water you add. Uh, jo Johnny might have added just the right amount. Maybe Dan added too much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or, or not enough. Who, who knows? Uh, I'm putting you up on screen, Michael, because you are so nicely. He says, uh, hey, guys, give me a shout out. I'm in Brisbane. Originals from Edinburgh. Love a whiskey. Mate, g glad you could join us tonight. Thank you so much. Uh, I even said on the, I said earlier on Facebook on the group that even if you don't have the pack tonight, there's about 70 or 80 people who have the pack. Who, those who don't, uh, you're welcome to just join us for a dram. Jump in on the on the Facebook group. Absolutely. Yeah. We, we like it, it, normally on a Friday night we'd be having a, a chat. Yeah, yeah we'd, we'd on, have the, the on, round, online the, chat. The, yeah, the big group. Yes, yes. Virtual pub. Virtual pub. Yeah. <laughs> how, how have we not called it that already? We just did. <laughs> that's a good one. Really? Okay. Yeah, that's a good one. I like I'm, virtual. I'm pub. taking royalties on that. Uh, no. No. <laughs> Uh, Michael also says, uh, totally agree, no water. Yeah, I'll even pop you up on the screen on that one as well. Very cool. And well, yeah, water didn't seem to make much of a change to Zan. Okay, there you go. Well, I'm not going to add water. <laughs> Oats. <laughs> okay. What do you reckon? I reckon that was a fantastic drop yeah. and, and showed the versatility of that distillery. Um, this distillery, uh, its main variety, it was available in Australia, still is, of course, but it was uh, championed by Woolworths. And so you would go into the Woolworths chain stores and you would see their ubiquitous, uh, which I'll say correctly next time, uh, no age statement in the big blue cylinder. It used to be about, from memory, $38, $39. Oh, um, right, right, and that, right. at the time, was the second biggest selling single malt in Germany. There's some trivia for you. All oh, right, uh, and of course, at, back at the time, the distillery was really known for blending. Uh, under new owners now, they're making a virtue of it as a single malt, and have really picked up their game significantly. And that, to me, was just a, a, a wonderful um, realization of that. Yeah, awesome. Okay, yeah. 
Well, what do you reckon? Number two? Number two, absolutely. All right. So we're going to stick with sweet, fruity and mellow for now. We're going to stay in the same flavour profile deliberately in the weird, wacky and wonderful part of the discussion, if you like, because I want, I want, you, to be able to, I want you to be able to taste the difference between two casks from the same profile back to back. Yep. And I, I find that exciting. It's like we're not jumping between profiles all the time. We often do. But uh, in this case, um, and you know what I'm really excited by, just on a production level? I'm excited that no one had leaking packs or leaking samples or disappearing boxes. It's the little things in life, isn't it, Matt? <gasps> no, really. <laughs> now, uh, I'm going to uh, share a little secret with you. It's not a secret. It's widely known, but I'll share something with you. I like this distillery. Yeah, I, I know you do. I have a lot of yeah, time for this yeah. distillery. And uh, not you letting know. the cat out of the bag here, but this is not from Scotland. No, this, this is not from this, Scotland. This, this is from a, uh, a very non-traditional whiskey-making country called India. It does say region India on your little bottle, so that's not a, that's not a secret. But this is an Indian whiskey, and the one thing I can tell you about this cask straight off the bat, which is unusual uh, for an independent bottler to even do it like this, is that this is completely monsoonly aged, if you like. <laughs> it is completely aged in India, which is a not which would surprise some, but it doesn't always happen. This is completely aged in India, so this is five years of Indian climate maturation, and it's worth making note of that. Um, Indian climate's important to, to think about that. Uh, this distillery has two big warehouses. One is underground, one is above ground. And the underground warehouse has um, angel share evaporation rates of 8 to 10% and the mm. upstairs one 10 to 12%. Right. Now, you compare that to Scotland where the, the allowance by uh, excise is 2% per annum. Um, and this is one of the reasons why um, whiskies from hot uh, climate countries uh, aren't usually taken through to great age because um, the barrels are empty if you <laughs> let it yeah. go too long. So in five years, this is about where this uh, distillery has its sweet spot and where it peaks. And uh, Wow. You know what? Though? There's such a great comment there. Steve, Stefan Wads and Julian White. Stefan writes Vegemite. Definitely Vegemite. That's amazing. And No. Smells like beta no, ca carotene. Vegemite. It's Marmite. Oh, I knew it. <laughs> you knew it. No, seriously. <laughs> no, Marmite. Okay. V viewers, if you know the difference between Vegemite and, and Marmite. No, sorry. It's not even Marmite. It's Promite. Promite. I can't even remember if I've ever had Promite. Those of you who know the difference between Vegemite and Promite, please send a comment through and, and tell us which one you know. Now, some uh, Craig's just said Umami. Exactly. That's what yeah, it is. Yeah, Umami. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, which, is, which is such a often not seen yet desirable tasting note, I find. Yes. Like, you know, that it's, it's, it's so unmistakable and yet it's... So hard to find sometimes. I don't know. For me, it is anyway. Um, there's, there's not uh, there's not too many whiskies that go so far down the savoury track. That, no, uh, they get they've, that. They've got that. Umami, not yeah. There's a comment here from TC, Mr. Chapman. Good to see you. Great of you to join us. <laughs> Monsoonly aged taxi. <laughs> okay. And um, Andy Milne asks, do they blend between the two warehouses? Andy used to look after this brand. Shouldn't you know the answer to that already? I don't actually know the answer to that. I don't think they do. I don't actually, I remember talking to um, the the rep for in Australia for this a, a while back and I don't remember any mention of that. Then again, I'm not sure if I asked that, but it's, I don't think they do. But it's, wow. So just think that that last one was definitely sweet, fruity and mellow. And I think very deservedly so. It was sweet, it was fruity, the pineapple chunks, it was mellow, it was easy to drink. As Andrew said, it was, uh, a sessionable whiskey, which it was. Um, I, I still do look after it. <laughs> That's good to know, Andy. Sorry. Um, <laughs> uh, I can't keep track of all those, all, all the brands there. Anyway, um, but I, I do, I think it's, um, yeah, I think this is a very, a very different sweet fruity and mellow kind of whiskey. Well, there, there's a couple of comments that have just come in. Uh, uh, Nick Husak says, uh, smells too sweet for Vegemite. Spot on your right, because Promite is sweeter than Vegemite. And <laughs> then Morsey has backed me up here and said, agree on Promite, AD. It's basically sweet Vegemite, which is what Promite is. So, yeah, it's coming through. Wow. Whew, that is bigger on the palate than I was expecting. 61%. Yeah. Oh, man. And the malt comes through. Isn't it? A, uh, I love whiskies that have gone through so much, gone, gone through the, the the process, and particularly in a hot climate country like this, and you can still taste the malt, you still taste yeah. the barley. Gee, if only a few Australian distillers could <laughs> pick that up. We like whiskey to taste of malt. Actually, put sparkling water in your glass. 
That's sparkling, that's sparkling water, by the way. Yeah, that's okay. I'm drunk it yet. No, but I, I I've listened to your comments before about sparkling water and. Oh, he's in, catering in, for me now, isn't it beautiful? In, in between drams, I know the sparkling water actually. It is one of Andrew's tips. Sparkling water can um can refresh your palate a fair bit, and in between whiskeys. That's very kind of you. Thank you. Uh, that is, uh, you know what? Uh, with most whiskeys, you have the nose, and it prepares you and sets you up for what the palate's deliver is going to deliver. And sometimes you might judge a whiskey by that nose, and then the palate will either confirm or, or, or make you think otherwise. This is a whiskey where the palate far, far exceeds what the nose set me up for. Mm. I'm getting such a massive, juicy amount of flavour in that that uh, is extra on top of that wonderful, savoury nose. These are, this was featured, these are, this was featured in last month outturn, in June outturn, and is still available on the website. There's about a, a, about a dozen or more bottlings left, uh, bottles of this left. Uh, so if you want to grab one of these, it is available tonight. Bundle it with your order or something else if you're grabbing one of the other, like the 112 or something. Um, don't want to miss out on that. There is another 134 coming down the pipe, which we're also very excited by, but this one is an unpeated one. So, you know, this is also very exciting. When you say there's another one coming down the pipe, is that the one that's currently in the pipe? Or it's the in one... the pipe. Okay, because you know there's another one even there's, higher yeah, there's the, the pipe. Yeah, exactly. Well, yeah. I mean, there's, there's one there's one in our warehouse that we haven't advertised yet. But it's okay, okay, well, okay, I'll, I'll tell you now, there's another one um, about but, to... About yeah, to there you go. Yeah, there you okay. go. Pipes. Um, <laughs> Less oily than the core range. Not sure if ABV makes it drier or, or that yeasty character changes it. Delicious, though. Well, the core range is interesting because there's yeah. actually five different expressions in the core range, isn't there? Yeah, Andy will know them. It's like so bold, the brilliant, brilliant, bold, edited, edited uh, peated. And the fifth one. And the fifth one. Umami. That's the fifth one, yeah. isn't it? Umami. <laughs> you know what? If there was a core range whiskey called Paul jo uh, oh, I just said yeah. the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fine, fine, well, fine. Yeah, 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 fine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, if there was a whiskey, I've already said it now. So if there was a whiskey called the Paul John Umami, I'd buy that. I don't know what you're referring to. Although, interesting enough, that is the name of the gentleman who runs the company. I just thought <laughs> you were referring to him. Oh, yeah, Mr. John. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yes. Good. It's good. funny, uh, this distillery, um, everyone thinks it's a new kid on the block. It's actually been distilling since 2008. Uh, making single malt, and in fact, the distillery's been going since 1992. Uh, now making yeah. Indian whiskey, uh, yeah, yeah, whiskey. Um, but yeah, they started making their single malt in 2008. They launched and brought it to market in 2012. So this is a single malt that's been on the market and around for eight years now. Um, so it's definitely not a new kid on the block, and it's found its sweet spot. It knows what it's doing. I don't think their single malt is very much in domestic market for them memory um as in locally in their own country yeah 30 percent. okay that's far more than i'll expect yeah yeah. yeah very cool um there's a comment from um uh jenny forrest who says uh, uh promite is meat extract whereas vegemite is yeast extract wow I, I didn't know that no i didn't either so very cool very cool uh Oh, here we go. Here's one from Andy Milne who yes, says... He's, he's uh, yes, he's just... Um, Thanks, the, yes, you know the, what? The missing one was um, classic. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, huge... Yeah, Drew McKinney. Um, huge palate versus light nose. Yeah, I'll agree with that. That's exactly right. Oh, I, added, I have added water to this, by the way. I just added a drop, and I like where it's taken it. Really? Yeah, I do. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, well, on that it's, recommendation, it's turned it into a different whiskey, but I like the direction that's taken with a drop of water. I don't think it. I don't think it needs much, but it, just a few drops. Yeah, I've, it right I up. just added far more than I wanted to, so I'm going to ah balancing act. Balancing act. Yeah, there we go. Yep. What a wonderful way to disguise the fact you just wanted more whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> it is oily, isn't it? Look at that. Mm. Beautiful. Hey, there's a reason it's oily. Do you know why it's oily? Because this is from India where they use six row barley instead of two yeah. row barley in Scotland. Yeah. And yeah. as a result of that, they use more husk and more oils come through into the wash. And so it's actually a distillery that makes a much oilier spirit courtesy of the variety of barley, which I think is fantastic because it means uh, it speaks to the country it comes from. Yeah. Uh, another classic example, they're not trying to make Scotch whiskey. They're, no. trying, they're making Indian single malt uh, with, the, with the ingredients they have. And that six row barley contributes to uh, an oilier wash, which comes through in the spirit. Wow, that's that's brought out a lot more fruit. The fruit, a yeah, the, water. the fruits changed it, and yep. the. But I love your comment earlier about 
being able to actually taste the malt in that whiskey. Mm. You can actually taste the barley in it and that six six row. But it's you can taste that barley in there rather than it just being straight up all just cask, cask, cask. Um, which is which is really nice to see. Um now I rec I've I've added a bit of water to mine now and I'm actually getting a touch of oak that wasn't there earlier. Yeah. Not yeah. often you add water and get the oak. <laughs> mm. Very nice. Mm, indeed. Actually, uh, Morsey's now uh, fired a shot across the bows back to Jenny saying that um, he believes uh, Marmite is the one that's made from meat extract. Well, that would make sense with Ma, yeah. maybe M, like meat or... Do you know what the competing... This, this is going to sound like a bad dad joke. I'm actually being very sincere at the moment. You've been warned. I've been warned. Do you know what the competing product that was brought out to combat Marmite was in the UK? What was that? Par will. Par will? Yeah. Right. Marmite, but par will. It's not a dad joke. It's, it's gospel truth. Look it up. <laughs> Look it up. The biggest competitor Marmite in the UK was a company called Parwell. <laughs> Honestly. No, I believe you. I believe you. <laughs> my jokes aren't even that bad. I, you, you can't. I, I'll, I don't know about that. Um, let me just see if I'm missing any comments on the other side here. Um, definitely needs a bit of water, says Annalisa. Yeah, I, but look, it, again, it's as Andrew said, it's completely subjective. If you... It, a few drops of water for some, others will, won't like it. That's why it's actually good. You've got these these kind of 30 mil samples and admittedly it's most of them are a little bit over 30 mil. Um, uh, but you can you can, um, you can can actually add 15 mils into your glass, balance it out with a bit of water, then try it again without or something or, or vice versa. Um, there you go. And uh, Michael says, I had a business, business whiskey tasting with four Indian whiskeys, very smoky. And a Scottish, which outshined the smokiness. Okay, good to hear. Uh, interestingly, there's no peat in India. So when this distillery does its peated runs, the peat does actually come from Scotland. Uh, drove past the distillery a few years ago, says Jenny. Unfortunately, they we were with uh, traveling with whis- people who weren't whiskey drinkers. We just had to drink it in the bars. Yes, this cask needs water to enhance the flavors, I think. Yes. Yeah, I... I'd- my, my uh, Indian pronunciation sucks, so I, I've, I've never known how to pronounce this, but it's from the area G-O-A, Goa. I'm guessing Goa. Goa, Goa, yeah. Goa, yeah, all right. Now, where is that? I've been is there. Not north? I, I, can't, there. I can't even remember where it is. It's, it's north, isn't it? Northwest. Andy, answer that question. Yes. <laughs> Are you still here? Are you still here? Yes. Yeah, I, the, yeah. Okay. No. There's a little tip for live streaming for you. Always arrange your questions in advance so you don't surprise one another. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like we've done this before. <laughs> Again, as always, unscripted, unprepared. <laughs> and there's another word for that. It's called honest. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> and fun. Nick asks, was this whiskey aged above or below the ground? Nick, I'd have to find out a bit more detail on this cask for you. Um it's interesting because the, this distillery does not do a lot of single casks. In fact, the only single cask I'm aware of is the one that they called Oloroso because it came from their one and only Oloroso single cask. Which uh, you went to the event. You I went to the did. launch. Oh, you? boy, that was that a stunning was a, whiskey. Yeah, yeah. Stunning whiskey. Yeah. Uh, how did you know that? I know everything. You weren't there. <laughs> no, I wasn't there, but I guessed you were. Oh, okay. Yeah. Stalking. He's a whiskey communicator. <laughs> He writes about this stuff. I ha- as if you're not going to be there. Uh, lovely drop. Keeps on giving. That's that one there. It's on the website now. Lovely whiskey. Truly great stuff. I think it's about 300 bucks. Somewhere around there. Mm. How do you think... Uh, oh, is, is, uh, I'm going to surprise him with another question. Mm. Um, there's, a, there's another distillery in India, which you actually had some association with for a while. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. there's actually two more. I mean, you could be talking about... Rampur, or you could be talking about Amrut. Oh, Amrut was the yeah, third one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's the third one, is it? Uh, Rampur, which is uh, looked after again by Andy. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Oh, I'm, 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 I'm not keeping up. Uh, but, there you uh, go. Yeah. But, uh, okay. Mr. Bailey, how do you see the development of Indian whiskey? And uh, is it worth getting into a chat about those two, or we don't have time and we should just move on? Oh, look, I, I'll make one comment that I think I, it's the same thing I always say about like Amrut versus Paul John. And I'm, I mean this sincerely. I reckon that, I, I honestly think that. Um, Amrut for a long time have had uh, their sort of pick of the litter when it comes to interesting casks, and you see like they've like you said you said before like Paul John was celebrating their one Oloroso cask. Mm. You know, it's like uh, Paul John of uh, sorry Amrut have had things like you know the Spectrum and the and port casks and sherry casks and uh, musket 
and this and that. They've had all these very interesting uh, cask finishes to their spirit, which I think have, has been great. However, I have maintained that I think Paul John, from what I've tasted, have a far better spirit. Yeah. And therefore, even tasting a Paul John at like 46 or 40 or something percent uh, from ex-bourbon or second fill bourbon like this one. That's a second fill bourbon barrel, by the way. I bet that's incredible. That's incredible, it? the amount yeah. of sweetness and fruit that comes out of that barrel. In it, only five years. You could almost you yeah. could mistake that for being, honestly, like a 16, 17-year-old refill sherry scotch whiskey. Yes. In some ways. It's like, it's, it's anyway, but that aside, I just think there's the spirit of Paul John is, is, uh, is performing better than Emirates these mm. days. And I, and that's why I would prefer to start with something that has good spirit rather than something that has a good cask. If that makes sense. It's spirit first, cask second. I, I thought it was fascinating when, when Mr. Paul John came out to Australia, uh, 2017, was it? Uh, about three years ago now. Yeah, about that. And, and, uh, I asked him a couple of questions about, uh, quality and, and what he thought about such things and, and he was very exacting and, and I, I remember clear as day him saying when I asked about something he said well it's got to be right because it's got my name on it and I think that's a fantastic when you put your name your name yeah, on, yeah. On, the, on the whiskey uh, you're going to take some pride and make sure it's right which I think they do which you've done <laughs> yes oh come on it's true <laughs> yeah, you, you take pride in what you bottled yeah absolutely yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just as we do as a society we wouldn't that's why the tasting panel exists that's why that every whiskey goes through a, a, um, a process. Agreed, agreed. What a lovely drop. Yeah. That's also sparkling. Yes, I know. Yeah, okay. Um, wise decision not to open it on the table. Uh, <laughs> a nice we've experience. all been there. Yes, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes at the, the fanciest of tastings. Yes, it? that's right. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think we should move to Wick. We should move. Well, I'm, yeah. I'm going to drink from Wick. I don't, I'm not going to move there. It's no, that's not that. I'll move there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Terrible nightlife there. <laughs> yeah. Not that either of us be able to keep up. <laughs> I spent a night in Wick. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a um, lovely place. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is. It's a gorgeous place. No, it is. Yeah, sure. I mean, at one. Oh, it's not good. We won't go into the history of Wick tonight. But uh... in keeping with the theme of weird, wacky, and wonderful. This is Distillery 52.31 I Dream of Creamy. That's where we're moving to next. The reason this was picked in the Weird, Wacky and Wonderful is because we've had a couple of 52s lately. We had Highly Entertaining from the the Fesh, the Fesh set, the festival set, I should say. And we had 52.2 something, uh, which was called... Name Escapes Me. Um, it's a strange name for a cask. Yeah, it was called Name, name Escapes, Escapes Me. me yeah. <laughs> so that'd be a good name for a cask. <laughs> Very generic. <Yeah. laughs> That's also a good name for one. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but this is this is the idea was that this is um, we don't often see a lot. I mean, in Scotch whiskey, you don't see a heap of X or turns casks uh, or finishing or any anything. So the idea is that we it was a whiskey that has had was is from Wick. It's a coastal whiskey, so this is a kind of cask that you'd normally see in the oily and coastal profiles. The last two have been. But this isn't oil and coastal. It's a juicy oak and vanilla, but it's still got a bit of that going on in it. And it's an interesting whiskey. So I wanted to showcase this one. This one has sold out, I'm afraid. It went finished. Uh, it vaporized itself in the uh, June outturn. And it's certainly a distillery that plays on its maritime coastal character, doesn't it? Very much in, so. And its branding and its message. Um... And because Andy's watching still, you also look after this distillery, which we haven't even said the name of. But how many distilleries can you name in Wick? Is that rhetorical? It is now. <laughs> Milking a cowfish. Thank you, Nick. You've got a better memory than I do. Oh, well done, Nick. Yes, yeah, yes. Which was which was a fascinating whiskey, and I actually it was one of those strange whiskeys. And I, a society of casks have, have thrown this curveball at me a few times over the years. That whiskey, milking a cowfish. I'll be honest with you, I did not like when I first tasted, and it was actually at a Melbourne flavor event that we did it at Starwood, and we opened it up. And it was not; it was just didn't sit in the lineup, or it wasn't the the right time and place. And then when I came back and tasted it, two or three weeks later, it was unbelievable. Um, sadly, almost gone. Yes, there you go, James. Yes, hey, true. Uh, Julian White has just challenged me and said, "Spend a night in Thurso, Andrew." Andrew, Julian, I have. I did spend. Thurso. I spent a few nights in Thurso, actually. And and if we're going to talk about Wick and Thurso, um, we need to give a big shout out to the Cowie family and to Society Panelists and Ambassador Anthony Cowie. Indeed. Grew up in Wick and his parents uh, still run a restaurant not far from Thurso in Scrabster. So cheers, Cowies. <laughs> oh, Miranda says the uh, the cowfish changed so dramatically. 
Mm, yeah, that's a good point. It, I think that's what it was. It, it changed quite a bit over time, and even the tasting panel notes said that it was it was a tough whiskey. It was it was a challenging dram, and I like that though. It's not every whiskey needs to be you know as we always say you know doesn't every whiskey needs to be smooth and approachable, and some of them need to be challenging. Some of them need to be tough and and interesting in that way. Um, you know, I, I wrote an article recently about uh, buzzwords in Scotland. Uh, I even commented you, on it. You did, you did, yeah, did yeah. But um, there was an opportunity for people to suggest other buzzwords, and you just said the, the S word, smooth, which a few people chimed in with. Yeah, smooth, yeah. yeah. Look, it's, it's a bit of a dumb word, isn't it? It doesn't really tell you anything at, at all. I mean, what else is smooth? White bread, cool. Yeah. Uh, Andy Milner's correct there. It wasn't called Wick. It was named that afterwards. Uh, it was called, uh, what was it called before Wick? Probably not important in the context of this whiskey. We should talk about this whiskey, shouldn't we? We should talk about this whiskey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this one has had an extra maturation. As I said, weird, wacky, and wonderful. This is a bit of a wacky maturation in a first fill. Uh, exoterns. Uh, barrique. Barrique is French word for barrel. It's it's an exoterns French wine cask. Sauternes is a fortified, noble rot wine that is all from Bordeaux. That is actually, it has a lovely sweetness to it as, as the wine. I encourage you all to actually taste Sauternes wherever you get the opportunity so you can actually understand what that extra maturation has done. Uh, we didn't include a sample of Sauternes in this pack, so you have to seek this one out yourself. Um, uh, from a brewery, you say? Yeah. Which was French for pretentious. Was that right? Oh, <laughs> I like the word barrique. barrique. I'm going to call all barrels barriques from now on. <laughs> <laughs> so first fill ex bourbon barrique. <laughs> Now, uh, there are a couple of distilleries that have made quite a virtue out of using Saturn casks. Uh, Brook Laddie did a good run with them. They did. Glen Morangy have done a fantastic run over the journey. And Glen Murray did some as well. They did? Well, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know. Uh, worth was, mentioning. That was Dr. Bill having a bit of fun across his, yes, yes. his portfolio. Um, you know what I love about the nose on this one? It is clearly something coastal. I don't know if I just get that immediate sort of like. Uh, Cold beach kind of smell, a bit of seaweed, but I also just get a lovely sweetness just layered on top, like icing on a cake. Is that icing sugar? Good one. Yeah, like, yeah, white icing sugar on yeah. the cake, yeah. And, and I'll, I'll go further, thinking of white powder, um, sherbet. <laughs> where, where were you going then? <laughs> <laughs> As he wipes his nose? Yeah, come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, dear, sherbet, dear. I don't... T- t- tell me you get sherbet on that. Uh the nozzle on this is so much like those cheese and bacon shapes biscuits. Cheese and bacon shapes. Cheese and yeah. bacon shapes. Now, that's a childhood taste. I haven't had shapes in ages. But I, I remember the shapes. I'm more of a barbecue shapes kind of guy. Yes, I was more barbecue. Yeah, but, you know. Was there chicken? There was chicken. There were chicken ones. They were like yeah. the round ones. Yeah. 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 Uh, Joey uh, says, I'm a big fan of Saturn's. Casks, Brook Lady do a fantastic job with them. Yeah, quite a few distilleries have over the years, as as, as Andrew was saying. I'm sort of racking my brain here as to others. But anyway, back to this this um this dram. Wow. Another just like the first dram tonight, another one where Ooh. sorry, the second one. Um the palette is just so different to what the nose prepared me for. Yeah. Wow. That's wacky. Craig Morton says pizza shapes. <laughs> oh, <yeah. Where? laughs> Are you saying you're getting pizza shapes off this? Are we going off? Is there a shapes off going on in the comment section here? Wow, I, I love that. I love how the actually the thing I love about most about this whiskey is that the Sauternes influence hasn't overwhelmed it. No, you know, like yeah. you know, it's not. It's Which not is what you want. I, yeah, I, I think you'd be very disappointed if it did. If you bought a whiskey that just tasted like a cast strength Sauternes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Mm. Uh, interested. Nick uh, Reynolds. Uh, Nick, good to see you again. Uh, Nick was also uh, at, at today's um, memorial. Uh, interesting that no apricot botrytis notes have come across from the Saturn cask. Yeah. Well, uh, how long did it spend in this? Uh, Eleven years in a in a. Sorry, my microphone's there, isn't it? Eleven years in a uh, bourbon hogshead before being transferred, and it's declared as a twelve-year-old. So it probably spent not much more than twelve months in the in the finishing cask or the extra cask, as you're yeah. calling it. Yeah. Darren Howie, milk bottle lollies. Oh, how good were they? Yeah. Yeah, that was my favourite. I'll be honest, I don't really get too much of that myself, but I, I love, I do, I know that flavour you're talking about. Oh, wow, that's, screw, that's fantastic. Sort of a sherbety marmalade with lemon and uh, yeah, creamy texture. Drew, Drew's on the money there. But I think this, it's very deservedly in the um, Juicy Oak and Vanilla. 
It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's definitely it's, the juicy. Yeah, definitely juicy. Yeah. Did you find when you had the first sip, uh, you yeah, just started salivating? Yeah, yeah exactly. sort of like it's like fruit tingles on the side yes, of my yeah, inside yeah, yeah, of my mouth. Yeah, yeah. It's great. Fruit, fruit tingles, sure. Fruit tingles. Yeah, there's, there's yeah, commonalities there. There you go. Yeah. yeah, might have got a bit more color. I just that's all. It's just. Yeah. <laughs> Fruit tingles were white when I was a kid. <laughs> no, they weren't. <laughs> nice try. Um, there's the bottle on that one. All gone, I'm afraid. This empty went into the sample bottles. There you go. Pop that there. <laughs> oh, El Tote's thrown in something there. El Tote. Uh, should have a bit of mould, musty like Fino style. Mm. 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 Interesting. <laughs> Yeah. A hint of milk. Okay, well, there you go. There's more milk bottles. So, uh, uh, Monica says a, a hint of milkshakes in the yard. <sighs> and it's brought the boys as well. So, well done. <laughs> All of them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so close. I'm so close. <laughs> I, I saw a great one of that, of the a sign saying you can milkshakes only, it was COVID distancing, maximum 10 milkshakes per yard. <laughs> yeah, <I saw> <laughs> Um, just whilst we're enjoying our sort of middle dram here in the lineup, I just want to mention that, of course, check your inboxes, of course, if you remember, because your July outturn awaits. There it is. Uh, that got uh, emailed to me today, today, didn't yeah, it? Yeah. 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 So if you haven't looked at your um, inbox since 11 a.m., which would be unusual in this day and age, there's your, um, there's your outturn, of course, which is now in your inbox for next Friday, the 3rd of July release. Uh, and you'll notice in here was it's probably... I say this almost every month, but it's one of the most diverse outturns I think we've ever offered up. There's gin, there's whiskey, there's rum, there's vaults collection, there's malt of the month. And just to show you how um, just damn sexy they look, look at that. There's your vaults collection. I've that's, got one of them in my office right now. That's dead sexy. There's a 30-year-old from Distillery 53. Pretty tasty. Did you look. say 30-year-old from Distillery 53? Did I say 30-year-old from Distillery? I did. Wow. Uh, refill X Sherry, full maturation. That's exciting. Yes. Bits and bobs in now turn worth having a look at. And of course, that one is on ballot. We've gone to ballot for these kind of things because it just keeps it really fair for everyone to, to jump in on that because the demand far outstrips the amount of outturn that comes out of these casks worldwide. That's that. James Finnegan says it got drier with some water. Yeah, I saw that comment. Oh, yeah, um, wow. And on that note, I'm not going to add any water then. I, I don't want that getting dry. I'm, I'm enjoying its sweetness. Jenny, I, you write Earl Grey tea. Uh, means it's an acceptable breakfast dram. <laughs> I would agree. It's, I, I, I love that Earl Grey note in a whiskey. I absolutely adore it. What's you, the – is it bergamot? What's the, what is it in Earl Grey? Um, I can't think of it. Yeah. I know, I know what you mean. Mm. Uh, I don't think it's bergamot. No? Okay. Uh, Craig, I don't know if that's a compliment or a backhander there. <laughs> Guys, you could do it. <laughs> Not in my lifetime. <laughs> Isn't it professional when you get paid? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, there you go. Uh, endorsement from Julian. Uh, agreed. It is Bergamot. Love Earl Grey. Okay. There you go. Well, I love Earl Grey. Oh, and okay. I, I love it. I love it as I love Earl Grey tea, uh, almost like builder's strength. Builder strength, like well, like the stronger the old yeah, grade, yeah, the better. Yeah, like, love it. I love spend time on a building site. I know oh, exactly. You know, what you know, builder strength. Yeah. I mean, I don't drink bushels. I, bet, but I'm just I have saying, to be honest. I haven't walked onto too many uh, building sites and seen the guys say, twining. Twining. Is there anyone twining? Yeah. Twining. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. A, a, a really high class building sites when you walk on and they've got Dilma. Oh That's yeah, the, yeah. Oh, I love Dilma. Yeah. <laughs> I only love Dilma because they make an extra strength version of their tea. Really? Yeah. E they're extra. Extra. There's that word again. Extra maturation tea. Mm. Yeah, there we go. Um, look, we okay, Drew, we knew someone was going to pick up on this slight little publishing error. You are correct. I didn't know it was going to be you that did it first. <laughs> uh, <laughs> breakfast in a Highland Croft, which is actually the next whiskey. In your tasting menu, it says heavily peated, but the color profile is lightly peated. The word heavily is still there, unfortunately, instead of the word lightly. Printing errors and proofing problems do still happen at the Little Old Society, so please uh, bear with us. It is lightly peated, not heavily peated. We'll get we'll get to that whiskey in just a moment. Jason tells me I'm going to the wrong building sites. <laughs> <laughs> 
It's like, do you remember when offices, you, you, you knew uh, when you go, went into the kitchen at your office or whatever and they'd have the big jar of, um, you know, Maxwell or, or, or Blend, Escape, Blend 43. Oh, yeah, no, yeah Blend and Blend 43 or International Roast. In, that was the big one, wasn't it? And, the, and then you, you knew your company had had a really good successful year when you came in and they got Makona. Uh, <laughs> in the glass jar, in the glass jar. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you knew that your company was moving up in the world. <laughs> It moved from seven to nine dollars a kilo. Oh, look at yeah. that. I'm gonna add a bit of water to that. I know a couple of people said I'm maybe really not. enjoying the sweetness of that. And uh, of our three drams tonight, this for me is the one that's developed the most in the glass. I think it needed a bit of time and a bit of swirling, a bit of air to uh, to, to hit its heights, which it's now at for me. Lovely drop. So this is, uh, you know, perched up in Wick, as, as, we, as we say, um, and uh, up, up in the Northern Highlands. There's not a lot of distilleries for neighbours in that neck of the woods. The nearest distillery would probably be uh, Wolfburn uh, up in Thurso. Then down to the south, uh, Balblair, maybe. Uh, Bal of course, yeah, Klein, Klein Leash and the soon-to-be-reopened Brora <clears throat> would be the, the nearest distilleries nearby. Yeah. All, all the old names coming back again. Brora, Port Allen, Rosebank. You're all coming back. Mm. Uh, Jason Davies, you're going to the wrong building sites, AD. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I, I, I agree with Craig here. He said contrast between nose and palate, a definite winner. I, I agree. I, I think I said that earlier. This is uh, one where the, the palate just took me in directions that the nose did not prepare me for. Yeah. Keeps on giving. And, and of, of our three whiskies so far tonight, I reckon this is the one with the best finish. This is the one where the finish uh, expands on the palate, takes you in other mm. directions. It lingers the longest. For me, it's the longest one. Yeah. And that sweetness <clears throat> sticks by. Here's a tip for you. You can, if there's a flaw or a fault I look for in some whiskies, it's when the finish turns bitter. So many whiskies can be sweet on the palate and then you swallow. And as that finish disappears and dissipates, you get this bitterness that comes through. And so for me, the, the, the marker of a good whiskey is one that stays sweet uh, and, and doesn't trail away. And, and this one keeps its sweetness, which I think is wonderful. It has some, it's the length. It's a wonderful the length. length. The yeah. length of that finish is fantastic. It's, it's funny, if a, if a whiskey has a really long finish, you're in no hurry to go back and take another sip. And yet, if it's delicious, you want that other sip. And so you get caught in this strange, mm. <clears throat> conflicting... Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll finish that sentence. Conflicting um, 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 words. Words. Thank you. <laughs> Motives, I think, is what I was after. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Drew's telling me to go back and try uh, one, whiskey number one tonight, which I can't do with the apparel I have at my disposal. But, uh, well, I do, actually. Um, this is going to look tremendously professional. Um, Drew, on your recommendation. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Where does it work? It's extraordinary. It's got a completely different flavour. And it's not like that's been oxidising, that's just been sitting in the, in the jar still. But Classic example of why we spend so much time thinking about what journey to take you on when we put together a tasting, because a tasting should send you in one direction, go this way, go that way, go that way. My hand is off screen now. Um, but you, you really, you, you want a, a whiskey event to take you somewhere on, on a journey of flavour and exploration. And it's fascinating to get to the third whiskey, go back to the first one and just realise what amazing right turns and changes you, you made along the way. Yeah. It, it, it's that journey which <clears throat> in, in, I love that, I, that, that comment about, uh, I don't who said it, sorry, um, Drew, coming back to a whiskey, if you leave a tiny bit in your first or second glass and you get sort of three or four in and come back to that first one and see how it's evolved, but not just how it has evolved, how your palate has changed over the last sort of 30 or 40 minutes or whatever yeah. it is, yeah. Yeah, no, good point. White chocolate coming through on the 112 for me now, says Jason. Yes, indeed. I, I'll, I'll, get, I'll give that. I'll tell you what, having gone back to the 112, boy, the rum really screams at you now. Yeah, right. Having just yeah. gone back, it's it, it, amazing how much that rum I, leaps out. I guess it's because it is, it, although they're both sort of weird finishes, the, the rum and sort of turns are very different. Mm. And I find that, uh, even you were saying before, like the finish on that, that the exo turns – lingers and that rum is kind of almost savory in comparison it sort of sits yeah. it's r11 it's already already quite a savory 
Agricoli kind of rums style to go with. To go with, yeah. It's a point worth making. If you do come to our events, uh, and, and we hope to have some um, up and running again very shortly, but when you do come to our events, if you can, always leave a little bit in, in your glass. Mm. As, as we move through our flight of five or six, whatever we're doing in an event, always keep some to go back to and just smell. And, and as I say, you're, it's amazing to progress from whiskey one, two, three, four, five, go back to one, go back to two. These are car strength whiskies when they're society products. We know they're going to change in the glass as all the volatiles and that high alcohol changes over time. And in the course of a typical society event that might go for an hour or two, that first whiskey will change tremendously in the glass and uh, always something worth doing. I tell people, leave a bit. Don't, don't finish your dram every time, as tempting as it might be. You'll see a little uh, scroll at the bottom of the page. It's probably irritating. I'll get rid of it in a moment, but I just wanted to actually just say that uh, if you're not a member of the society yet and you're watching in, because there's always quite a few people watching from all sorts of sources, YouTube, Facebook, etc. If you join the society between now and the end of July, you've still got a full month and a bit to go. Uh, I'm giving this away. One bottle in the country that will go to a member of 64.97. This was a part of our exclusive. No members were ever sold a bottle of this. So this is your opportunity to get something that never existed as available for members. It's called a sunny day in late summer. It even says in the label, exclusive partner bar cask. That one is up for grabs. You, everyone's got a uh, chance to be in it. You've got to be a member to be in it though. And if you're a member, already a member and you refer a friend, you're also in the draw. There you go. Shall we, uh, shall we 1644 it? We will in one second. Um, mm. Andy Melns just asked a great question. When oh, yeah. tasting cask for selection, how much do you look to oxidation and those changes when sampling and reviewing? Mm. Andy, I'll tell you a great example of that. When uh, the Australian local panel used to, to go through our processes, we would typically spend 20 to 25 minutes on each sample because it was amazing how many often whiskey on its first nose or first sip, you go, no, I don't think it's going to make the bar. And then we'd pay the respect it was due and we would give it time. And it was amazing how many drams 15, 20 minutes later suddenly came into this amazing level of quality that would impress us. Mm. So the answer to your question, Andy, is yes, absolutely. We would take oxidation into account and uh, and seeing how whiskies improve in the glass over time. Yeah. Great, great yeah. question. If you're at a tasting I was hosting right now, you get a prize for that question. That was a good one. And I'll, I'll answer the easy, easier question from uh, Nick Huzek. Is 64 the only distillery that rhymes with the dis with its distillery code? Yes, as far as I know. I've, tr I've said that the came up last time. I remember yeah, that. That's, that's yeah. came up last time. And I, I actually took that question last time and phonetically checked it, and it's, it's all there. It is the only one that rhymes with its distillery name. And there are some little clues. I love the little clues, however, that 64 and 46, 13 and 31. And there's things like that that you can find in the coding system, which I love. Uh, so that, that new distillery that's opened up uh, just west of Glasgow, Glen Spive, we need that to be cask 145 then. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But unfortunately, 145 has already been taken. Has it? Yeah. 155 then. 155. 155. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So yeah, 155, 155 Glen go. Spive. There you go. <laughs> uh, and, and yeah, Johnny, exactly. You sort of saying exactly what I just said. I love the fact that it's opposite distillery is 46. Exactly. So 46, 64 sort of face each other across the road there, which is great. There's one more. Sorry, Matt. Oh, Alex, I knew you were going to do this. Okay. You know what? You can post it. You can post the code at least. Um, Miranda asked a great question. Would you ever consider another flavor category along lines of by water or air? Drams that do uh, especially well with oxidization dilution. I think that's very hard for what the purpose of the flavour profiles is about. Mm. Uh, it's about being able to give members and, and consumers a very quick snapshot of what this whiskey is like. Um, and it is a snapshot. I mean, these are colour coded now so that mm. when you, if you go to a society bar or a venue, you know, you, by colour you can choose, yep, that's the flavour profile I like, that's the sort of whiskey I feel like. And I think we'd probably overcomplicate things a little bit if we started to take in uh, into those things into account. But uh, good question. Good I'm question, Miranda. Good. Thanks for joining us, by the way, Miranda. I, I assumed you'd be uh, behind the stick tonight, so it's really good that you're here. Thank you so much. Um, it's a slight pronunciation issue in Scotland, I'm sure, but 54. Oh, oh no. That's a stretch. No, no. <laughs> that's a bit of a stretch, maybe. And uh, 23 kind of works too. Oh, if you say it the very Americanized way of the distillery, yeah, 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 it kind of yeah. works. No, I don't. I don't, I don't buy either of those. Sorry. Um, I, I I remember going to the Mash Tun uh, pub in Avalor. No, it doesn't work. No. It doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. Fifty-four. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. 
What a fantastic drop that was. Now, 16.44. Breakfast just just in a looking box. at some of the comments, I think a few members might have actually uh, raced ahead to this one. I saw 16 appear in a few. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There. So we, we might be playing catch up to some of you. No, that's all right. That's all right. So um, the reason this was picked for Weird, Wacky and Wonderful is because there's such a great amount, for lack of a better word, there's such an incredible amount of great whiskey that is peated whiskey that comes out of distilleries that is not in Isla. And I wanted to, I really want to pick that out for that reason because the diversity of different uh, styles of peated whiskey is not limited to the likes of your Lafroigs and Eidbegs and Bunner Harvins. It's it's which are great whiskeys, don't get me wrong. And I love Isla whiskey, of course. But I'm just saying like there's there's the whole point of putting this one in is that it's there's such a diversity of great whiskey coming out of uh peated whiskey coming out of distilleries that are on the highlands in the space side, Campbelltown, etc., Lowlands even. So, and that's really exciting to see and to be able to showcase that. And the other reason for this one is because we haven't seen too many 60, 16s, I should say, sorry. And this is, uh, I'm going to say the name because it's not the distillery, but this is technically called uh, Ruad Moore uh, as, yes. as, a, as a distillate, as a make. Uh, and trade, it's a trade industry name for Peter Spirit from this from, distillery. From this, this, from this distillery. I almost, thought, this I, almost, distillery. I almost thought you were going to get no, it there. No, okay, no, okay. No. Yeah, yeah. Um, but this is that's right. It's it's a sort of an insider name to um, to what they they don't actually use that name at the distillery for their peated runs. To the best of my knowledge, they don't have a regular peated core range expression either. So it's kind of cool that we get to taste a single cask peated whiskey from this distillery. Now, the other thing about this distillery, which I want to mention tonight, was that this is they like to often say that line like it's. Scotland's first distillery. Oh, bullcrap. No, 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 hold on, hold on. They always like to say that because it was 1775. No, it the, wasn't. Se- yeah, keep going. No, no, Sorry. it wasn't. It wasn't. They were dis- This is the thing I love about it. They were distilling from as early as 1717 or even earlier. It was illicit distilling for a good 60 years before they got a, a tax license. In the district? In the district. No, not, hold on. Not, not at that site. No, no, hold on, hold on. Not at that site. Okay, you're right, you're right. But there's, there's other distilleries that lay claim to the age of being around as long as they are, like Little Mill, Bamore. Uh, there's, there's a number of distillers that say they've been around even longer. That's fine. But this is something they always like to claim. And in recent years, I think we're going to see a change in what this distillery does uh, since they were sold to mm. um, Lalique Group. Uh, so they're owned by Lalique these days, and Lalique are known for extremely fancy pieces of glass. So maybe you'll see some extremely fancy spirit coming out of this distillery in, in ridiculous decanters in time to come. But... Oh, it's what you want in a whiskey, isn't it? <laughs> a, a wonderful decanter. I normally melt them up at the end and drink it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but this is this is this is the thing. It's I think I think it's a fascinating whiskey, which is why I wanted it to be in the weird, wacky, and wonderful. I think this is a wonderful whiskey. I've tried this already, and I think it's just got that farmyardy, uh, peated note that I love in a whiskey. I love uh, and almost going back to that umami comment from before. I, I reckon the, I I actually get a bit cranky when I see this distillery. Talk about its heritage. No, they, they, they do it. They, they they talk about it as the, as the the Scotland's first distillery, which is it's incorrect. It's bollocks. Oh, and no one knows. Like, it, there's there's no actual this was Scotland's first distillery. That's the reason why. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, 1812, I think, isn't from memory, isn't that when they? No, got no, they're definitely seven, 1775. No, but they got their license and they became a legal distillery in 1812. No, they became a legal distillery in 1775. Oh, I wish I would have Ooh, words later oh. on after this. But the other thing too, oh. it was closed from uh, when 1930 <laughs> to 1951. And when it reopened, it reopened with stills from Talabardine. You know, there's, there's a bit of weird trivia about this place. But anyway, you know what I'm going to do when, when we can get tastings up and running again? Um, I've got a few events I need to squeeze into this, the Sydney calendar, maybe around the rest of the world as well. Sorry, the rest of the country. Um, we've got to do that uh, grand tour of Speyside. But I was thinking just the other day, I want to do a whiskey trivia night. Mm. Whiskey mm-hmm. trivia. We'll start. We'll kick started in Sydney. Then we might take it around the rest of the country. One of the questions will be: What year was this? Did they get their license to distill yeah. over? And, yeah. and the second question will be: Was Andrew or Matt right on that night? <laughs> That's actually worth fifty points. That question. <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry, there's a whole bunch of comments coming in. Um, Strath Isla, uh, Andy Milne says. Strath Isla was seventeen ninety seven. Wasn't it? in the seventeens. Well, Strath Isla, Little Mill. But more, they all challenge that. They, yeah. they all challenge that date. So uh, even even Taliban challenges that date. So I'm not sure. What's the, even Taliban didn't have a, had a release called 1745 or something silly like that. Yeah, that was the name of their release to celebrate the first year they were distilling, which is again 
dubious. Um, Strathila, exactly. Strathila is, yeah, even as Andy says again, yes. Lindors, oh, well, Scott, okay, sure. By the way, um, oh, Andy says 1775. Oh, come on. Urgh. 50 points, Andy. Look, you could be, you could be wrong as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm getting uh, I'm getting vanilla custard on the nose. There's Nick Huzek. Okay. By, by the way, uh, whis- whiskey trivia nerd of the night, uh, and that's a compliment. Um, Scotty Mansfield uh, is. We were talking about this distillery, <laughs> and he said, "Wowzer, Towser, could this be Grouser?" Um, and those who know this distillery will know that he's just made three incredibly intelligent references there. So uh, well done, <laughs> well done, Mr. Mansfield. That is that's impressive. Yeah, yeah, very very well done there. Yes. Does it still go into grass? Uh, there's probably contractual yeah, uh, probably. arrangements. Um, often when these, it was fascinating to to learn that um, when uh, Glen Morangy acquired Ardbeg, part of that deal oh. was that they still had to honour the old contract that Allied had. Right, and so there was a lot of spirit that actually had kept on going to Allied, which of course Ooh. became Pernod Ricard. Yeah. So Glen Morangy were distilling at Ardbeg, making Ardbeg spirit, and they were contractually bound under the deal to have to. Log it off to Pernod Ricard. So I dare say that when Glen Turret changed hands, there's probably still a fair bit of it. Required. I mean, it's it's still the brand home for Grouse, is it not? 2018, it was sold to Lalique. Sure, but but when know. you go there, there's still a giant bloody bird in the in the courtyard. Oh, you know how long things. Take well, it's a statue. There, it's been yeah. toppled by now, so it doesn't matter. So. <laughs> Minimum of three statue toppling references in this live stream. <laughs> We're contractually ob- obligated. Um, it's really dangerous running a tasting when you don't have Google at your disposal. We're, we're making crap up at the top of our head here. You're all watching at home with the ability to look up Google and, and check whether what we're saying is correct or not. Drew, I love that comment. 16.44, sweet, luscious, fresh Morton Bay bugs on the beach. Yum. You, you know, one of my tasting notes for this originally was like, it's it's like a um, smoky bacon and eggs in, in the morning it, with a bit of sort of uh, cool. like, um, you know, uh, Tabasco. Smoky bacon eggs with a bit of Tabasco. It's just, it's got that lovely sort of, um, it's even called uh, breakfast in a Highland Croft. It's it's a breakfast peated whiskey, if you like. I don't know if uh, Mr. Chapman's still watching, but there was an amazing uh, distillery, sorry, Society Lafroig that came out years ago. And it was light shining from a Highland Croft or something like that. Right, right. Um, TC, I'm sure you remind me if, if you're still tuned in. But uh, the Highland Croft is very evocative, isn't it? Yeah. It's a great, great name for, for whiskey. Great name for it. Um, yeah, it's, it's a – look, Craig Morton says 340,000 litres per annum, says wiki. You know, That's that, very small. It's a very small distillery, yeah. yeah. And, a very, uh, and a remarkably ugly one too. It is, isn't it? It's a, it doesn't, there's not much to look at. It's not, it's not like, you know, it's the, basically the opposite of Strathyla. No, I call no, it. No, 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 come on. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it's another. Okay, oh, yeah, yeah, triggered. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I just, uh, it's this is also triggering damage. Is also a side profession of mine. I am, um, I'm <laughs> getting quite adept at. Um, you can freaking talk. <laughs> <laughs> um, Scottish Taddy scones fried in butter. Mm. What a delicious whiskey. And uh, you know what? I think very aptly. Um, Categorized as as lightly peated. Yeah, it is lightly peated, not heavily yeah. peated, folks. Yes, and 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 all the better for it. Actually, I, I'm really enjoying the fact that the peat has added a, added a dimension, and yet I'm still getting that lovely sweetness and that touch of honey that Perthshire whiskies are known known for. This distillery is, oh, let me think about this. Uh, most a lot of people who have toured and and done the tourism trip around Scotland would have been to Pit Lockery. This is about. Uh, 30, 40 kilometres south of Pitlockery, um, north of Stirling and west of Perth. So if you're good at triangulation, you've just worked out where it is. But this Perthshire, uh, the distilleries around that area are known for being very sweet and honey. The honey's mm. the, 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 the glue that binds them all together, I find. Uh, and I still get that sweetness um, coming through. Beautifully shaped. And again, we used this on, on an earlier whiskey tonight, um, hugged with the, with the peat. It was hugged with rum before. H- hugged, hugged with Pete, Pete, yeah. Great name for a bottling. Hugged with Pete. Mm. Ewan, are you watching this? Get, mark these down. <laughs> what was the other one? <laughs> something something generic or something. And then, I don't know. Hugged with Pete. I can go with that. Hey, this is dangerous. My wife's tuned in. Me too, Matt. Uh, my, trigger my, on. My wife's, wife's leaving comments. <laughs> <laughs> Just, I, 
I'm just here to trigger Andrew, according to... Okay, so here we go. No, I'm not really. Um, Shane McKinney, good to see you, mate. A drop of water brings out the finish and makes it linger so much longer. Yeah, I actually get... I, I, I can imagine water would uh, go somewhere this. You've I, done it already? I've I, I done it already. It's, okay. it's, um, I actually get more peat with water. Oh, okay. Right I on. actually get slightly more, almost like a bit more sort of ashy, soot, sooty note. Um, the sweetness is sort of dialed back just a, a touch and the, the ashiness and the sootiness just comes up a bit more with that bit of water for me. Uh, 40 minutes west of Perth. Yeah, Scott, that's that's it. Reminds me a little of Peter Glengarry. Okay. Oh, who remembers Peter Glengarry? I remember Peter Glengarry. Wow. I've only had one or two, but I've, ones I've tried to work. I tell you, in Australia in the early 2000s, it was... The Glengarry, I think it was a 15-year-old. It was available in almost every bottle shop and it was the most glorious drop. And it was smoky, which uh, the owners decided, well, actually, once they closed their uh, their maltings, mm. um, that put it an end to that. But, yeah, if you ever, ever come across Glengarry bottlings from uh, that period, ooh, chase them down. Mm. Beautiful drops. Absolutely. The best. Now, we had, a, uh, not a sister cast, but another example of this make yep. um, in 2017 or, or was it 19? I can't remember now. We had uh, two last year. Two last year, mm. 2019. And I recall you saying you thought it was one of the, the highlight casks of the, of the year, certainly at the yeah. event we had it at. It was. A, it was called Acme Ghost Repellent. That's it. That's yeah. the one. Yeah, yeah. It was also a, it was a peated category, not lightly, I think. Yeah. And it was a 16 dot something and it was a, a peated six, uh, peated, I almost said it. A pe- <laughs> it, was a, it was a peated 16 and it was, um, it was uh, unbelievable. It was one of my picks of the year. Uh, and I, I don't say that lightly. I mean, no. it, was, it was one of the, probably in the top five society casks I'd had that last year. Yeah, um, yeah. Truly amazing, uh, amazing cask on spirit interaction there. I have a, a vague recollection, uh, Society Ambassador Andy Davis featured it at the at the ste- eight steps taste yeah, at the end did. of the year and he had a massive queue yep. at the front of his table. So, and, and again, this is not a long way removed from that. Um, one of my other favourite whiskies of the year was actually one that you had featured at your table at that same event, which was Kept in the Dark. Oh, how good was that? Great whiskey. Yeah. Still kicking myself for not getting one. Mm. It was unbelievable stuff. Um Acme was stunning, says Miranda yeah, Marie. Yeah, yes, yeah. Uh, absolutely. 16.38. Thanks, Alex. I couldn't remember the code, but um, there you go. And Nick Husick asks, are you guys using society spirit glasses? <laughs> yes, 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 we are. Yes, we are. <laughs> it, it, it's it's almost like you're attuned to a society tasting. No, we, we're using society spirit glasses uh, for the sheer reason that there's a spirit in the lineup and I've run out of whiskey glasses. That's that's the truth. As, and, as Andrew said, he's being painfully honest tonight, as I am, so it's... I've run, I, I don't have any in the office. We've completely run out on the website as well, so we don't we, have we, any. We look after members before we look after ourselves. And uh, if a member places an order in, our personal stock goes out the door. Yeah, I literally sent my last two to a member in Sydney who ordered them. So I don't have I don't have any whiskey glasses at the moment. I had uh, a spare um, six pack of these, which we're which we're using. Uh, I'm going to uh, give a shout out to Craig Morton, who's just made a fantastic observation here. Ashy more than peaty. Yeah, 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 mm. exactly. Which is which is kind of the point about this the weird, wacky, and wonderful element. It's like so many Isla whiskies, and I love Isla whiskies. You often get that sort of boggy peat, as I call it, that sort of damp, mossy kind of notes, and I love them. You've got to be in the mood for it, of course. Uh, but sometimes you taste Highland peat of whiskies like this, and they're not so. It's not so much like it's not boggy or damp. It's just it's like brisk, ashy bonfire smoke. Yeah, and, and I, I love that kind of stuff in a whiskey. You don't. Peter uh, Ben Romick from the Highlands is uh, similar. You know, yeah, absolutely. Know. Yeah, lovely drop. I, I think it's a great classic thing, and and, and I think uh, society members should probably keep an eye on this more often. I know when when our turn arrives, and you turn straight to the flavour profiles that that uh, tickle your taste buds, and people go to Peter, and I know people straight away start looking. Oh, which which Isla Distillery is uh, yeah. is featured this month? Um, and look, that's that's understandable, but uh, the distilleries don't have to come from Isla to be wonderful Peter drops. No, um, and I, I think um, uh, look, I'll, I'll tell you quite honestly now, you're going to see more and more um, Highland mainland distilleries in our Peter flavour profile. There's a couple of reasons for that. One and world, and well, yeah. Uh, one of the reasons is simply there's more mainland distilleries making Peter stuff now because it's popular and because the blend is needed. Um, and the fact that, uh, to be quite frank, it's getting harder and harder to, to get some of the stuff out of the, uh, the Isla distillery. You've got to remember that the distilleries on Isla are very small, uh, with the exception of Carlila, which is, I think, the 
fifth largest in the country in terms of its production output. At, oh, what are we up to now? Seven million or something like that? Seven million it's juggernaut, yeah. Um, the next biggest distillery would be Lafroy, get a touch over three. Uh, and that's a major single malt brand. Um, so, yeah, you, you're looking for the reference, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, the, the distilleries on Isla don't make an awful lot and they do need some for their own brands. So uh, hence the reason a lot of the mainland distilleries are making up the shortfall. So we're going to see more of that on our outturns. And, uh, look, I don't think I'm spilling industry secrets here, but the society has been fantastic lately at reaching out to a few of the mainland distilleries, shaking hands and saying, you, are guy, you guys are making some amazing peated spirit. May we have some, please? And I'm pleased to report that uh, we're making great inroads in that area and filling our warehouses as we speak. Yeah. That's, ex- that's extremely exciting. It's very exciting. Yeah. The table raised a little bit. <laughs> uh, it's after eight o'clock. You can say that now. It's all good. <laughs> Children's programming's finished. Is this not even floor of yours? <laughs> Um, Actually, on that note, Andy Milne says, mainland peat is so much more versatile too. Yeah, very, very true. And just if you think about uh, geography and geology and all the things that go into that and history, um, that's a good point. We've moved on. I'm just going to pull the next one. Oh, oh, you can't mm. see it because it's being blocked. But uh, the colour is, uh, as, as TC says, is... Correct. Correct. Uh, now... The fifth dram is not a whiskey. Now, in the virtuals we've done before together, we've done five whiskies, which are uh, all whiskies. Five whiskies, which are all whiskies. There you go. Um, <laughs> you heard it here, folks. <laughs> I can confirm they were whiskies. Uh, in the in this one, however, with Weird Wacky and Wonderful, we wanted to throw a bit of a curveball at the end here, something sweet to finish with, something almost like a, a something yeah, something sweet to finish with to to enjoy and to try something a bit weird, wacky, and wonderful. Um, this is, of course, a rum. This is a single cask rum. Now, it is a Jamaican rum. It, as it says in, in, in your um, in your tasting notes, a little extravagant. It's on the website now. There's a few left, uh, not too many. And it had a, an extra maturation in a new oak heavy char barrel. It just rolls off the tongue. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to get Andrew to talk a bit more about new oak and heavy char and things like that in a moment. But I want to give you a bit of a rundown on what this is. This is R1. This is the first rum distillery in our coding system. And this is only the fifth ever we've seen. So very, very few and far between. But this is not, this is from a distillery that starts with M. I'm not going to say it because it's not actually a distillery. So I can say the name because it doesn't actually exist as a distillery anymore. So it's a it's it's the Clarendon Distillers Limited. So it's this massive, massive rum distillery. Uh, Jamaican rum distillery that produce both in pot still, in column still, and its diversity of output is massive, but most of it, and when I say most, I mean like 90-something percent of it goes into what is, is sold as white rum. All sorts of brands. It, rum works very differently in their labeling and branding from whiskey. This is the thing that blows my mind, is that the regulation on rum as a category is as loose as it gets, aka it doesn't exist. So, <laughs> so and this is, uh, yeah, and this is the thing I love about it. So this a very small number of casks. A um uh, I want to get the name right here. Inswood. A small number of casks are shipped off to Inswood. So Inswood was a rum distillery that stopped operating uh, 45, 50 years ago. And it's been basically this distillery that's frozen in time. All the gear's still there. All the production's still there. Uh, the photos of the distillery are unreal. It's like these old uh, rick houses and these old sort of buildings that used to make rum there. But the, the maturation, the Clarendon stock is matured at Innswood. And this is what ends up being these R1s. And they're, they're very hard to come by. And when you get something like this, it's actually really exciting. James says, uh, smells like you're walking past a nail salon, which in, yeah. implies acetone. Um, Not an unusual tasting note for Jamaican <clears throat> rums. Yeah. Uh, you often get that uh, acetone nail polish remover note, uh, fresh lipstick kind of smells. And you know what? Uh, interestingly, I'm smelling that, and the first thing it made me think of was our first whiskey of the night. Yeah, right. It's, because of the rum. There's yeah. a commonality there. It's and if you, and that's the kind of thing where that's the whole sort of tie in here is that you could go back to number one, one one two, ex Jamaican rum cask matured, and you're tasting now a Jamaican rum, which is very cool. As Darth would say, the circle of life is now complete. <laughs> All right, strike three. <laughs> but that's just, this is the thing. It's 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 exciting because it's um. 
It's had it's had extra maturation in new oak heavy char. New oak. New oak. It's oak that's new. Heavy char. <laughs> We're getting there. <laughs> I'm springing him. A, no, a, no, a, I, a, a level of char that is classified as heavy. <laughs> Barrel. Barrel. Wood. Round. Two hu- things. Two hundred liters odd that holds spirit. That's right. So, no, no. Should we take it seriously? Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Up to you. No, but look. You, you cut a tree down, uh, you let the wood season and um, and air, air season, kiln, kiln dried, all those yep. things. Yep. Uh, different distilleries do it different ways. Um, and then what the Scottish industry has found in the last 10 to 12, well, 10 to 15 years or so is that you can breathe a lot of life into spirit very quickly with, with new oak. Um, now, of course, the Americans have been doing this for years. Uh, you know, a, a bourbon is filled into virgin oak casks. Uh, and if you read the textbooks that were written in the 1970s and 80s about Scotch whiskey, they used to typically say that uh, new oak, uh, virgin oak, was too powerful. It overpowered um, Scottish whiskey. And so they would always try and use casks that had previously matured something else and been seasoned. Hence the reason why we almost invariably use ex bourbon casks and ex sherry casks. But there is certainly um, a movement, uh, and it's driven by cask shortages at the moment. Um, but you can breathe a lot of life into spirit very quickly by putting it into new oak for a short period. Heavily char, of course, the, the level of charring um, dictates the amount of charcoal that is in the wood as it matures. And charcoal is an amazing, um, uh, what's the word I'm up to here, medium uh, to help mature a whiskey. And mm. the, the, the more charring, uh, so that charcoal has a lot to do with the extraction of uh, volatiles and particularly sulfur from the spirit. Uh, and has a tremendous impact. So we can engineer and influence how a whiskey matures by how much the barrel is charred, whether it's toasted as opposed to charred, mm. either or. Uh, so these are, you've got to remember, whiskey's made from uh, water, yeast and barley, only three things. And when we look at um, the diversity of flavours that we achieve, how we play around with the barrel and the wood is one of the key tools that a distiller oh. has at their disposal. To help them get that variety. I've just had a taste of that. Well, one up on me. No, I was just I was nosing it whilst you were you were talking about. Whilst the I was crapping on. Whilst you were crapping on about something, you know. Uh, extravagant is a really good word for this on the on the on the actual name of this whiskey. A little extravagant. It is a little extravagant. It's it it. It, so the, the, the vagrant level is extra. There's that word again. It's extra. very extra. Yeah. It's very weird, wacky, and wonderful, though. I think. I, I think it's the fact that we've got a rum that is not just the first rum distillery the society has dealt with, but also only the fifth cask we've ever seen, and it's had an extra maturation. Um, I love that comment from uh, Scott Mansfield. Uh, we bought a cask from them this time. Pip's story on R one dot one is hilarious. Yes, Pip's story on R dot one one dot one is uh, definitely a little bit. Uh, R-rated and involves all sorts of things that shouldn't have happened. But all you know, history is history, and that was a bit of fun. That he, uh, and R- R-rated for rum, of course. R for rum. Yes. R one dot five. Get it? Get it? Get it? Yeah. No, it's true. No, we. You know, no. Pip was not involved in the production of this cask, and he did not, in fact, steal it from a distillery. Can I ask? Have you ever had a rum this fruity? This fruity. I'm getting so much fruit mm. on the palate with that. Don't get me wrong, the vanilla is there. It's, it's mm. screaming vanilla, uh, as you'd hope. Lot, yeah, no, I get but you. I get that on the palate, absolutely. I cannot recall having a whiskey, uh, sorry, a rum as fruity as that. I'll try adding water to this. Now, do society rums have added sugar? Nicholas, no, they do not. No. Uh, there's, there's something about, um, I'll just talk about water. I've just added a drop of water to this. I don't think that's going to improve it. I want to give it a try. Uh, I'm always funny about adding water to. Uh, non whiskey. I'm always. It's like Armagnac, cognac, rum. I generally don't add water to, even if it's at a monumental proof. I find it just it it always just mutes everything. But I'm going to give it a go. We had a tremendous uh, night in Sydney about five six years ago. I think it was must have been before your time. I think just yeah, just uh, it was a rum night, and we went through some of the most amazing society rums. And this was when we had a period of, of society rums come through that were bottled at unusually high strengths, mm. uh, like north of eighty percent ABV, uh, and it was the most incredible night. And and one thing I remember, we teamed up with a, with a local rum distributor who bought some of, bring some of the, uh, the the more commercially well known rums into the country, 
uh, and we featured two or three of their rums and two or three society rums. And it was the most incredible night. And I remember drinking, A, drinking a lot of rum that night and no kidding. B, waking up the next morning feeling a million bucks. Yeah, right. Oh, it, it was almost enough to convert me. Uh, I, almost. I almost switched sides. But, uh, yeah, it was incredible stuff. So a, a good rum, uh, cask-aged rum, is a beautiful thing. I'll double down on that. One of the most amazing rum nights I think we've had at the Society also was actually in September last year where we collaborated with Bricks in Sydney. Yeah. And we uh, and we tasted six Society rums, including their ageing product, their agricole, and uh, their single cask never before tasted release where we got the opportunity to open R13.1 uh, which is one of the rarest um, rums we've ever released uh, which is from a distillery that is long demolished and um, you know doesn't does not long exist and my use of the word long there was not a reference to long pond it is just not been around for a long time uh Iridian rum from uh Walkaman, Queensland near Mariba okay getting banana from Dunder ooh Dunder bananas Demerara sugar, demerara sugar sprinkled on banana, then grilled. Oh, I love these tasting notes. Well, Thank I, you, I mean, that's that's a fantastic thing, isn't it? The, the demerara sugar. Uh, I mean, that's what you, but that's what you want in a rum. Jason Davies says, "Come to the darker side, AD. Ooh, <laughs> come to the rum side." Well, I think that's a really good one to um. Sorry, I'm just. You've got comments appearing on your screen that aren't appearing on mine over here. That should be the same screen. It should be, shouldn't it? It is the same screen. Yeah, but it ain't. <laughs> Well, they're on the screen screen as well. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining us tonight. This has been great. A lot of fun, as always. You'll have to forgive the in jokes. <laughs> it's a lovely, sweet one to finish on as well. It's a, it's a dessert dram, isn't it? it is. Can you call a rum a dram? I don't know. Um, well, what, dram's what, a unit of measurement, so I guess you could. Uh, what's, the, what's the official thing for a rum? It's tot, isn't it? You, you, yeah, you yeah, used like to say a tot of rum. Black tot and tot, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's, it's, a, it's a lovely, um, the sweetness is amazing to finish with. And do you know the Australian one? Uh, a Bundy of rum. No, I mean of a dram. Oh, okay. Uh, no, enlighten me. Nobbler. Really? Yeah. There you go. There you go. A nobbler of whiskey. I like that one. Wait, let's, let's adopt nobbler. Let's use it more. I like that word. Mm. That's in the... Um, Trivia night, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> you just heard it here first. <laughs> uh, I got it. <laughs> um, I didn't even get to show those last two, but there's the bottle for Highland Croft. I'm, I doubt there'll be any left on the website because we announced it an hour ago. Um, and there's the rum, of course, the, the R1.5, a little extravagant. Um, very good of you all to join us. We, we do appreciate people giving up a Friday night uh, to sit and watch two guys um, try and amuse each other. Um, <laughs> but no, it was a wonderful opportunity to go through five or uh, well, four different whiskies and, and, and one wonderful rum uh, and give a little bit of a, a showcase and an insight into what the society does, uh, both in what we bottle uh, and how we present spirit. I think that's important. That the, the message is critical. It's not just what comes out of the bottle, but the story behind it. And hopefully we gave you some insights into that uh, tonight. Yeah. Um, and again, I hinted on this earlier, but we are so close. We are so close to uh, being able to get some events up and running, um, providing we don't all take a backward step with it, with a second wave coming through. Uh, but uh, the venues that we regularly deal with are starting to reopen. Uh, they're giving us some insight into uh, how many people they can accommodate. Um and so we do have a few events that are almost there and ready to, to announce. Uh, and we look forward to doing this with you real time in live space, face to face, because uh, I'm sure you're all sick of uh, Zooms and cameras and all the rest of it by now. That stuff, yeah. Mm. Uh, thanks, Andrew. Thank you. It's no. always nice to be let out of the cellar. Thank you for letting me out. <laughs> we keep him down there. It's fine. And um, I thank you, everyone, for um, being a part of this, being a part of the society, sharing great flavour. And uh, as I'll just, there's nothing more I can say on top of what Andrew already said, really. We're looking forward to doing some great events with you soon. The gathering is scheduled to come back this year. That's, um, and our turn is next week. So we've got lots of going on at the moment and we're looking forward to sharing it all with you soon. Um, thanks to everyone who's uh, throwing a few comments. Um, every, I won't be able to read them all out, but I really appreciate it, everyone. And uh, we'll catch up with you in the next one. Looking forward to it. Thanks, thanks everyone. Slanjava. Slanjava.